back. This is the Allegheny Northern in N scale. And today we're talking about uh, snow and we're going to do some scenery on the layout. So now that I've got uh, some additional layout space that I can work with, I've decided to expand my one of my favorite scenes and that is the winter scene. And I don't see winter done as a layout setting very often. And I think that's because people sort of go out, well, you know, that, that white snow and that gray is just going to sort of get boring after a while. And to some degree, I, I agree with that. It can. Um, winter is usually pretty monotonous. The lighting is usually pretty low and everything looks kind of gray and bleak. Um, but there is, um, you know, when you get your first big snowstorm and everything's covered, there is that sort of glisten that, you know, everybody likes to see. And so, in my modeling, I try to capture that one element in winter, which is a nice big snowstorm and the snow is relatively fresh. And so it looks like uh, it would say on a uh, stereotypical Christmas morning. Now, uh, the scenes that I'm going to show you are not seasonal, so they don't change. They are forever winter. Once you do this, you are going to be stuck in winter. And I did a tutorial earlier, uh, it was a two-part series, and it showed you all of the techniques that I used. And I'm going to update that a little bit here because uh, I've got some new products that I'm going to use. And what I'm going to do is take you through the process of getting the winter scene ready. So uh, very simply, uh, it is, we're going to paint the base white. Uh, it's just everything in the dark. Uh, the dark of winter here uh, is going to be white, so there's not going to be any grass. The, the base can be just white. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in with flex paste, uh, and we are going to set up a snow base using the flex paste. It gives the otherwise very smooth surface of the foam some texture, and then we are going to build a base with the Woodland Scenics Soft Flake Snow. Now, th this you're going to see a handful of snow products. And the reason I use so many different products when I put the snow on is this Woodland Scenic stuff is great for a base. Um, but if you're doing just a thin layer of snow or melting snow or um, snow on the road, this is too granular and it doesn't look like snow. It looks like you dumped, you know, extra white gravel, uh, like marble chip gravel on, on something. It just, it doesn't look very good. Um, so it's great as a base, not real good for detailing. So uh, stick with us there on that. Deluxe materials, shoveled snow, you've seen that in the past videos. Uh, and then we are going to augment that with deluxe scenic snowflakes. And uh, somewhere on here is the ice sparkles. Here we go, right here. So uh, those are the two new products that we're adding to the, uh, to the repertoire here. And other things that you're going to need, other than uh, obviously some white paint. And I just used very cheap uh, white paint from, this is the apple barrel paint. You can get it at Walmart or... Um, different craft stores. Uh, we are going to use some gloss uh, Mod Podge as an adhesive and we do have a spray adhesive that we're going to be using and it's just simply a 3M product multi-purpose adhesive and that's going to be to get the uh, fine layer of snow over the top in place. So um, the river here which is drying I just poured that as uh, Woolen Scenics Realistic Water and the base is made up of, once again, apple barrel paint. That's the black centers. Uh, then I faded out with a Model Masters. This is dark sea blue. And then finally, on the edges, I used, this is a Tamiya XF50 field blue paint. Uh, and I've got some photographs where um, there is a stream, and it's winter, and you can see the snow all over it. And... The colors of the stream are very, very, very dark, just like this. Um, so I'm going to show you how we're going to do some ice on that once that dries. Uh, but today we're going to focus on the snow. So before we get too far in, I want to talk about two things that I tried, thought I was being a little smarter than the average bear, uh, and did not work out how I expected. And that is, when I see folks do actually attempt to do a winter scene, uh, they avoid the track. And there's good reason for that, because when you... When you put the snow material on the track, uh, it tends to really funk with the operation of the locomotives. So uh, you lose contact with the rails and the rails don't stay clean. And 
you know, it just doesn't, doesn't work out very well. So, but if you don't put snow on the track, then your layout looks goofy because you've got um, this giant winter scene, and then all of a sudden you have no snow on the tracks, and it doesn't look realistic because snow lands everywhere. Um, so, uh, I tried a couple of things. Now, what I did is I used two different snow pastes. Uh, these are typical for e either crafts, winter crafts, or for uh, a lot of the um, military diorama folks use it uh, when they want to do a winter scene, um, and it's it, it's fairly expensive comes in those small little bottles but it's a paste and i figured well you know just like i'm doing a track in pavement i'm going to put that in between the rails and that will solve my problem that did not solve my problem in fact that made a whole new set of problems and i don't think i'll ever do it again um it didn't dry uniformly it didn't dry well it took on some kind of a blue color in places that i don't know what that was i don't know if it pulled something off the rails or what but it ended up being a disaster um, so I don't know if it was just the products I had or if it was how I did it. Basically, I just took a, um, a pallet knife and I dragged the knife across the rails, making the um, paste even with the rails. Cut it down a little bit just so that I'd have that clearance. And then I used an old uh, truck uh, with a plastic wheel set in it to clear out the flangeways. So it just, like I said, it did not work. Don't recommend it. Um, so I went back to uh, just building it up with Woodland Scenics and Scenic Cement. And we're going to call that that done. So, okay. Uh, the next process here that I'm going to go through is I'm going to do the scene where all of my junk is right now here. So I am going to uh, show you how I do that. And then we'll uh, come back here at the end for um, the final shots to show you what it ended up looking like. Very rarely does snow lay totally flat, and so we're going to use Woodland Scenics Flex Paste to add just a bit of texture underneath. And what's nice about the Flex Paste is that it is already white. It's nice and thick. It'll hold its shape. So I'm just using a brush to add some texture to the otherwise perfectly flat uh, foam base here. And... One thing that you want to do is you want to keep your brush moving in the same direction as you do this because snow does drift and it's going to drift within the direction that the wind is blowing. So we want to make sure that we keep that in mind as we apply our flex paste. In winter, only the very tallest of grass make it through the snow. We're going to represent that tall grass with a little bit of Woodland Scenics Natural Straw. And we're going to push that into a thickened bed of flex paste. Now we're not going to trim any of these to size right now because we don't want any of that uh, trimmings to get stuck in our flex paste that we're going to cover with snow. So add shrubbery and tall grass until you are happy with your scene and then we move on to the snow. Once we have the texture of the flex paste the way we want it, we're going to begin by building up the snow base using Woodland Scenic Soft Flake Snow. While the flex paste is still wet, apply a light coating of the soft flake snow over the flex paste. Try to get a nice covering without burying the shape of the snow that you created with the flex paste. Once you've added this layer of snow, give it a few moments to dry and then hit it with a combination of scenic cement and either isopropyl alcohol or water with soap detergent in it. To model snow between the tracks, we're going to take a smaller brush. Once again, using the Woodland Scenics Fleck Paste, we're going to apply a nice layer, giving some texture to the area between the rails and giving our Woodland Scenics Soft Flake Snow something to attach to. Once we have a texture that we're happy with, we'll take the Soft Flake Snow and fill in the rest. To do the areas between the rails, we'll repeat the same process, taking very good care to make sure that we don't get too much of the flex paste where we don't want it. A smaller brush is helpful, but you will still need to clean your rails when you're done.
keep in mind you're going to want to keep your flex paste which will become a solid blob when you're done when it dries well below your rails and as far out of your flange way as possible and then come back with your soft flake snow and fill in the gap secure all of this with scenic cement and leave it alone until it's dry before cleaning the rails and the flangeways. The final step in building up our base is to apply deluxe materials shoveled snow along the roadbed and areas where either plows and or passing trains would have pushed the snow off to the side. Using a spoon, distribute the material like you would ballast along the edge of the rails and don't be afraid to shape it and form it. Once you've reached it to a point where you're happy with the way it looks, you're going to soften the edges by applying another layer of soft flake snow. Use this to fill in the gaps between the piles and the rails so that the snow looks continuous. Don't apply so much that you bury the shoveled snow and lose the effect. Once again, everything gets sprayed down with scenic cement. Once the snow base is dried, Take time to plant your trees. You're going to want to put them in before we put the final layer of snow in as the spray adhesive will help the snowflakes cling to the branches or the needles of your tree. And we're going to take our 3M and we're just going to hit the whole area. Using a downward motion just so that it sticks to the top of the trees and not the bottom or anything else. And then after that, we'll apply our snowflakes. Applying the snowflakes is as easy as sifting from the container, a good 12 to 18 inches above the surface you're coating, and then just let the flakes go where they will. Making sure to cover your trees and the ground. If you desire additional snow, you can go ahead and repeat the process and there's no dry time in between. One of my absolute favorite things about winter is the awesome snow moving equipment that uh, state DOTs and local municipalities use. And so it wouldn't really be a winter scene if we did not incorporate a snow plow into it. And not only did I want to have a snow plow, um, but I wanted to show that the snow plow was moving and that that snow was coming off the, off the blade. So what I did was I took a small amount of gloss medium um, and it's just a Mod Podge gloss medium and I put it on some wax paper and then covered that with some of the deluxe material snow, soft flake snow and let that dry. And then once it was dried, peeled it off and then curved it into sort of an arcing shape so that it gives the impression that the uh, snow is being curled off the blade. And then what I did is I took some of the shoveled snow and put it around to represent the snow that's being pushed and thrown from the blades uh, as, the, as the truck moves. So uh, I'm very happy with the way this turned out and we now have a plowed road behind our truck. But what we got to do here now is we have this other lane which we're going to represent as something that the plow has already passed. And so how we're going to do that is even though, um, you know, DOTs come through, they've, um, they've done what they can as far as getting the snow pushed off to the side. The blade kind of skims along the ground so it never gets it totally totally cleaned. Um, and even then, even when they throw the salt or the sand behind it, it doesn't necessarily melt all the snow. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the gloss medium, the, the Mod Podge, and it's nothing exciting, we showed you that earlier, and we're going to cover it in some of the AK Interactive 
uh, ice sparkles. And you can also use the uh, sparkles from Deluxe uh, Innovations, I'm sorry, Deluxe Materials Kit, it's the same, same kind of deal. Um, but we're going to then take that and mix it with just a little bit of the uh, AK Interactive wet ground. And what I want to do is I want to represent that slush mud looking stuff that, that gathers on the side of the road from all the traffic. So we want to make it kind of a little gross and, and disgusting because that's typically how winter roads are. So uh, I'm going to show you how we do that right now. Okay, so applying the Mod Podge is nothing exciting. We're just going to take a small brush and we're going to sort of put this down. Oh, don't forget ice is, it's not going to be just ice. It's going to be some water as well. So there's going to be some texture in there. And we, don't, we just want a thin layer. We don't want to put this on real heavy um, because you know, it, most of it is going to have drained off. So it's just enough to give the surface of the road a little bit of a glisten. And we definitely want to pile it up towards the edge of the road here where water would be trying to get off the, uh, off the road surface, but you've got the snow piled up there. So that's kind of where it's going to, where it's going to collect. And then once we get that far, uh, I'm going to modify my my attack plan here just in, in the smallest of bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take first the ice sparkles and just going to right out of the jar here. We're just going to sprinkle some of that right into the right into the mix. And we can we can cover everything. Uh, because when it dries, everything's going to dry clear and kind of icy looking, which is exactly what we want. And then I'm going to take some of the uh, the snow and sort of blend everything. So together. we are using the deluxe materials snow, and we're just going to try to get a little little covering here along the along the edges. And we're going to keep that towards the outside. Now, if we represent that it's still snowing. Even though DOTs come through and they've tried to move some of the snow off to the side, you're still going to have a collection of, of snow on the road because it's not, you know, in a heavy snowstorm, it doesn't necessarily melt um, and clear the road right away. So um, it's okay to have some snow covered areas still. Maybe the blade didn't, you know, it's an old blade, but, uh, you, you know, unless it's been, you know, hours after the storm, you're still going to have some some snow. Once we've created our icy road and we now have our snow plow and our plowed and unplowed side, the next step we're going to take is to add some road slush. And to make road slush, all we're going to do is we're going to mix some of this AK wet ground and some of the AK ice sparkles with a small amount of water and uh, Mod Podge gloss and we're going to get a mixture that looks just like this and I'm not going to tell you what that mixture is as far as how much of each I use because I just kind of mix it until it looks appropriate for what I'm trying to do and then you should get something that looks basically like a sparkly muddy soup I guess is what you're what you're looking for and you're going to place this sparingly in the places where road slush would gather and so all I'm doing is sort of muddying up the snow here a little bit because this is where the slush on the road would gather is right along the sides. And you'll have it on both sides. And then if you want to make some of the larger piles of slush, then you can just sort of roll that off your blade so to speak uh, you could do a use a brush for this if you wanted to um, I just find that's a little bit easier to work with kind of a spatula blade I guess on, on the end of this carving tool and I'm just gonna put this wherever vehicles would be kicking up road slime so you're gonna get salt and sand and you know oil and it's all going to pick up in the snow and it's going to make it kind of gross and that's what we're looking for here okay so the very last thing that we want to do in this video is work around the river and so we're going to take our ak interactive terrains wet ground diorama 
and we are going to use that diorama acrylic right along the riverbed and you can see that I've got a couple of things going on here right now so we're going to focus on the river's edge and that's going to be where the warm water that's still flowing is going to meet up against the snowy terrain on the side so go ahead and place it a little bit thicker where you want your grasses to be and then go ahead and cut your grass the length and put that in it's very similar to doing it uh, up here on the snow areas and this bank we haven't done yet so you can see what it looks like in the raw then you're going to come in with your deluxe materials and you're going to use your soft flake snow and your ice sparkles and you're going to soften that edge between the snow and the water edge and this is kind of a season to taste so you want to leave some slushy snow there so that it looks like you know the snow is melting back away from the warmer water but you also want to uh, sort of blend the um, two scenes together so that you don't have a, a harsh line as to where the water and where the uh, land is so I'm going to show you that here on this side. Okay, right so now. the technique is as you would expect. We're going to take our soft flake snow. This is the deluxe material snowflakes that we're using. And just out of the shaker, we're going to start blending the edge of the snow line and the mud line together. And all I'm doing is erasing any kind of harsh lines. I want that snow to sort of blend right to the edge. And once I'm happy with how that looks, I'm going to go ahead and take our icy sparkles. And I'm going to use that as the final coat. Now I'm doing all of this while the uh, AK interactive material is wet so that all of our scenery material just sticks right in there. And I'm just going to pour this along the edge. And we're trying to get sort of an icy, kind of a melted snow look. And that's really about as complicated as it is. So we are down to adding ice to the river. There are multiple ways to add ice. And what I'm doing here is this is a mix of just basic acrylic white paint and Woodland Scenics Realistic Water. And I'm just going to pour a very small amount uh, where I want the ice to start, which is going to be along my bank here and I'm just going to let it drip in and then I'm going to let it flow. This is a very uh, good lesson of less is more and we're going to let it just sort of find its own level and see what sort of a pattern it makes. Uh, if it makes a realistic ice pattern and we're happy with it then we can leave it alone. Uh, if it makes a shape that's kind of like well I don't really know what in the world that is uh, then you can tease the color around a little bit until you get Something that looks a little more natural and maybe not so random. And then just sort of let it flow back in. Add ice as you need to. So if you need to add a little bit more, um, and, you know, in some deeper areas or you want to show it completely frozen over. And you can change the amount of paint you add. It will give you different effects as to what that ice actually will look like. And so I am putting it over a thin layer of Woodland Scenics um, realistic water that's already down. So it's, it's kind of floating on top of that right now. Uh, you can do it that way or you can add it um, to a dry riverbed. It's, it's once again, both techniques work. Uh, you will get a little bit of a different result, but uh, it's not that one way is right or one way is wrong. And so we're just going to tease this into the pattern that we want to see. And then that is going to be our ice. And we're going to call that ready to go. So think about where the ice would actually form. Um, and think about whether your stream is a flowing stream or whether it's more uh, stationary, more stagnant. More stagnant is going to have more ice. Uh, flowing is only going to have ice around the outside where the water is going to pool. So think about that when you're 
pouring your ice and where you're putting it because um, you're not going to want to have everything be total totally icy and so it definitely helps if you've got some reference photographs uh, to look at when you're when you're doing this and once you're satisfied take a look and see if it's Definitely how you want it, because uh, once it dries, it's really not changeable. Um, you do have some options Well, it is still wet if you need to make any changes. Okay, so I went back and I made a few quick changes. Once I put the camera down and was finishing up the work, I realized I didn't really like the way this bank was shaped. So I took a little bit more of my wet ground uh, acrylic and I extended that out, added another set of uh, dry grass there, but this is what you're going to get with the snow and ice at the edge of the river. And I know you're thinking, well, wait a minute, how did you get that technique with white paint? Well, uh, to be honest with you, I didn't. Uh, I forgot a very uh, important step, and that is you are going to need to go back to your ice sparkles, and you're also going to need to go back to your um, ice sparkles from deluxe materials right there you're gonna need those and you're gonna sprinkle it over the areas where you have your white paint and you're gonna want to be pretty heavy with it and let it sit up on top of there let it sort of absorb some of that woodland scenics realistic water that you have and what it's going to do is it's going to displace some of that white paint and you're going to get areas that look just like this that are going to look very slushy they're going to look icy you know where there might have been some ice and some snow blew across it and then you're going to get some awesome looking areas yeah a little bit too close there just like this where you're going to see that icy look at the edge and that is what you're looking for that's that's almost perfect and with that we're gonna call this scene done for those of you who are wondering now yeah that's great get all that scenery in but are your trains ever going to be able to run over that and the answer to that question is yes eventually so what i mean by that is when you go back and i don't care how careful you are um, you're going to find areas where the scenery encroached on the movement of the train uh, area just a little bit. So you're going to have a snow mound that's in the way since everything's locked in place with scenery snow, uh, cement. You know, it's going to be uh, catching a snow plow or an overhang of a car or something. And you're going to have to make some adjustments. So this is not something that I would try to complete, you know, right before you're doing an operating session or before you're having guests over to uh, see the railroad. But um, you're going to have to use multiple techniques to clean the tracks. Uh, I use everything from a bright boy. Yes, I did say bright boy. Uh, I know that those are bad for your rail heads, and believe me, I only use them very sparingly. Uh, but I will use it to take the initial heavy glue and scenery off the rails. Uh, and then I go into... Uh, Woodland Scenics, they have that little magic wand type thing that you put the pads on and then I use an electrical cleaner to scrub it down and, um, you know, get the rails clean. Now, what you're going to also notice is that the snow that you put between your rails is also going to uh, cause a problem if it's too high, uh, if it's against the rail uh, insides. And so you've got to be very careful to make sure you pull that all away and to keep your... Uh, scenery below your your rail heads uh, take an old locomotive is my recommendation and once you think you've cleaned it enough i assure you that you haven't but once you think you've cleaned it enough go ahead and give it a run through that'll show you at least where the problem spots are and where you need to do some additional cleaning and then go back and hit it and after about three or four times you will get uh, trains rolling again so uh, i promise you your your scenery will not take the uh take the place of your trains it just takes a little bit of time to get everything cleaned up uh, I do use quite a few tools, um, and these are all tools that you can find at your craft store. And what they are is, you know, various tools used for clay work, actually. Uh, and 
Um, although I'm not sculpting anything, uh, they are great for moving scenery around, carving plaster, and uh, cleaning up rails. So uh, if you find a kit like that, there's a lot of cool things in there that you can use to sort of scrape scenery away from your, from your rails. And so I highly recommend that. Thank you. 